Now that we have a way to determine whether a user has pressed a button and which button they've pressed, we need to determine if they've pressed the correct button. To do that, I'm going to create another function, and this function is going to return either a true or a false. To do that, I'm going to type bool. That's for the Boolean data type, which resolves to either a true or a false, or a 1 for true or and a 0 for false, if you're looking at it numerically. The name of this function is just going to be match sequence. And the first thing that we're going to do in this uh, match sequence function is we're going to create a for loop to loop through all of the items in our sequence. Since we already did that up here in the show sequence function, we can actually just copy this definition of a loop up here. And I'm going to paste it right there. So just a reminder, this for loop starts at the beginning of the sequence. It goes until we've reached the end of the sequence and we're incrementing by one. We're looking at each item in our sequence. I'm going to create a char variable type to store the character corresponding to which button has been pressed. So to begin with, I'm going to make it an N to represent that no button has been pressed. Then I'm going to create a while loop. And the while loop is going to see, it's going to continue running as long as button is equal to n, as long as no button has been pressed. And inside the while loop, all it's going to do is it's going to keep trying to set, it's going to keep setting the button variable equal to whatever the button pressed function returns. Now remember, the button pressed function, it always returns an N by default. If no button is pressed, we get a bunch of Ns. But as soon as we press uh, either the button that corresponds to the red color or the button that responds, uh, rep corresponds to the green color, then we're going to get uh, something besides an N here, button will get set to either an R or a G, and we'll jump out of this loop. The button variable will have a new value. It will not be an N. So once we know that a button's pressed, it's time to test it. We're going to say if button is equal to, actually we want to test if it's not equal to, the color at the point of the sequence that we're looking at. So I'm going to type sequence and then I'm going to say char at. This is the character at the index that we're currently investigating and x corresponds to that index. If that's the case, then we want to return false. Here, false means that the player was unable to match the sequence. However, if the player is successful and they go through the entire sequence, they go through this loop several times matching all of the, uh, the characters or all of the colors in our sequence correctly, then we want to return true. So here it's it's worth it to note that, that as soon as they fail, this function is going to end. It may only they may we may only loop through this one time and then it returns false and it stops looping through it. That's the end of the function. But if they go through the for loop several times and they get each character correct, it's going to keep going until the for loop is exhausted we've gone through every item in the sequence, then and only then will we return a true. They successfully matched the sequence. To test the match sequence function, let's scroll up and delete the code inside of our loop. And then we're going to just throw some dummy 
uh, colors inside of our sequence here. I'll put in an RGRR. And then down here at the end of our setup, I'm going to call the match sequence function. And I'm going to put that in a serial print ln, print line command, so that we can see the results of this function. We can see what it returns. Once you've done that, go ahead and open your serial monitor and click Start Simulation. So, because the first character in my sequence is an R, I should click the button that corresponds to the red color, and then the green, and then R twice. So. And I can see I got a 1 back. Remember, 1 uh, in Boolean logic corresponds to true. So this indicates that I was successfully able to match the sequence. Now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to stop my simulation and start it again. And this time I'm going to do it incorrectly. I'll, let's see, I'll do a red. And then I'll do another red because it's supposed to be green. So this is going to be wrong. And you can see it returns a zero, which indicates that I was unsuccessful. I did not match the sequence. So it appears that our match sequence function is working as expected. Now that we've tested our match sequence function and we can see that it's working properly, go ahead and stop the simulation. You can remove this line of code. And remember to get rid of the the characters within your sequence. It should be blank when it comes time to program the real game. This was just for testing purposes. Once you've tested your match sequence function and verified that it's working, and once you've removed the code that you used to test it, go ahead and make a commit to Bitbucket.